Congratulations. <laughs> if you would, excuse me for a moment. They're absolutely racist. <sighs> Frank, will you please tell your wife she works for a racist company and she needs to quit immediately? I don't know about immediately. We do have bills to pay. Mm, you're a big shot engineer. You don't need the money. Well, thanks for telling me how much money we need, Misha. But it's not up to me. I can't make her do anything she doesn't want to do. I'm not quitting my job. Not in this economy. Can we just change the subject? I just feel like you should be more mad about this, Sharon. Is this about you not getting that promotion? Wait, what happened? I was up for a promotion at work. I didn't get it. Because she's black. You ain't tell me about this, sis. Well, it's really not as dramatic as she's making it out to be. Misha thinks everything is about race. You said it yourself that they gave it to some white woman who does half the work and puts in half the time. I didn't say it like that. And Katie's actually my friend. But babe, I thought you told me she hates her job. She does. I mean, she is good at her job, don't get me wrong, but I think she's just waiting for her boyfriend's acting career to take off so she could just stay at home making scones or something. If she hates her job, why she take the higher position? Exactly. She was gonna turn it down. I told her she shouldn't. Why? Oh. How will it benefit me if she turns it down? I mean, it's not like they were offered to me if she did. It's a good point. No, so you would rather work under someone who's less qualified and that you know doesn't deserve the job? No, that doesn't seem right. She has to choose her battles. Ugh, that's what makes me so angry. Why do we have to choose when to stand up for ourselves? Because, in all honesty, it can mean the difference between life and death. It's always meant that, though. I think it's just now, because of social media, people can actually see that shit. Yeah, I could think of several times I wish the cameras were rolling. Mm, like when? Plenty of times. Once, I was literally sitting on the steps of my apartment. And what were you doing? Selling weed? No, I wasn't selling weed. He know I stopped. Anyway, bro, so this cop rolls up on me and asks me, what am I doing? So I told him, sit in here. Then he proceeds to interrogate me about why I was sitting there. And I'm like, because I live here. That's crazy. No, the crazy part is, is he told me I need to go inside. That's it, no explanation, just you need to go inside. Order me around like I'm property. Was it super late or something? Why does that even matter? It doesn't matter. And no, I wasn't. It was midday, sunny, every reason to be outside. Damn. You act like you've never experienced racism. No, Langston, I definitely have. But just because you've been punched in the face doesn't mean you're not surprised when it happens to someone else. Yeah, Frank had a pretty bad run-in with the police just about a year ago. I was down south on a business trip. Um, was in the car with my coworker, Julie. Young white woman, you know the type. <laughs> yeah, I know the type. You talking? I don't. So, she was the one driving. We get pulled over. And this police officer comes around to the passenger side where I was sitting. He asked me for my ID. So I handed it to him. Then he begins to ask where we were going and how we knew each other, like totally asinine questions. The situation escalates, he asked me to get out of the car. And then before I knew it, I'm on the ground in handcuffs. My God. My coworker's in the car screaming and crying, but then she did something that I had never thought of. What? She called 911. She called the police on the police. <laughs> yep. That's crazy. And it worked. Once he heard she had 911 on the phone, he eased up and eventually let me go. Julie was hysterical, couldn't believe what she just saw. How are you? I was pissed, of course. I felt angry and humiliated. 
and ashamed. What I hated the most was that I let that racist prick make me feel that way. It took Frank a long time to get over that. And I don't think you can ever really get over something like that. Those experiences always haunt you. I filed a complaint, but of course it went nowhere. I mean, you're right. The way racism makes you feel never really leaves you. You can even feel it when you walk into a room and it's there. You can't really explain that to someone who's never experienced it. It's, it's like... Like you have no value. Like you're not even human. Yeah. All those times you're followed around a store, or someone refuses to look at you or even talk to you, and if they do, it's in the superior condescending tone. It really makes you wonder if it's because of you personally or if it's because of you physically. I can tell you right now, sweetie, it's because of you physically. If you were white, you wouldn't even be wondering. Yeah, you know, honestly, for some reason, I thought for you as an artist, you'd experience racism less. Like, isn't the, what is it, creative community a little bit, you know, more accepting? Not at all. I can't even count how many times I've been asked if my art is a representation of the ghetto I grew up in, or how it relates to the black experience. It's ridiculous, and sometimes hurtful. It feels like a losing battle when your work is always scaled down to the color of your skin. And the sad part is that you want to so badly be seen as more, so you go out of your way just to prove them wrong. All the while further falling down the hole into assimilation. And for what? People are gonna believe what they wanna believe, no matter how you act. There's no way you can go into someone's mind and change how they think or feel about you. <laughs> that has to come from then, like the other day. This white guy said to me, if you just stop talking about it, it'll go away. Oh, that is probably one of the worst things you can say. When white people say stuff like that, it's just their way of saying they don't wanna hear about it anymore, so would you please shut up? It's a very self-serving thing to say. That's why I will be at every rally, every march, and scream from the top of every skyscraper. I refuse to let someone treat me as less than. I refuse to let some outside person determine my inside worth. Based on their fucking prejudices, I, I just can't. Sharon, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> you know, Jimmy and I grew up poor. Yeah, we did. Our father, God rest his soul, he taught us that only with hard work and education could we change our condition. He had this belief that if you worked hard enough and you were able to raise your social status that you could somehow overcome racism. I watched that man work himself to death to make that happen. We all know that's not true. Of course it's not true. Social status doesn't change people's perception of who you are. But at the end of the day, I am still my father's daughter. And everything he taught me is still ingrained in me. Misha, you said you, you wish I was mad? Well, I am mad. I know that there's no reason why I shouldn't have gotten that promotion. I'm the first one in the office and the last one to leave every day. I'm the one everybody comes to when they need help. I'm the most senior advisor there. So the only thing I could see is that they just they just didn't want me in charge. But they knew just how bad it would look to give it to a white man. So they picked the next best thing. And it infuriates me. It tears me up inside. But if I sit here and dwell on it and all the other racist shit I go through, it's gonna keep tearing at me till there's nothing left. So yes, I will keep waking up early every morning. I will still work late every night. I'll keep doing my best because I am my father's daughter. And I have to believe that my efforts mean more than the color of my skin. Even if it's not true, I still have to try. In my mind, I see a line. And over that line, I see green fields, lovely flowers, and beautiful white women. Oh, you know what I'm like, come on. Y'all, this is the most depressing get together yet. And we've had some bad ones, man. 
Are we supposed to be having a good time? You know? <laughs> this ought to loosen things up a bit. Mm? Yeah. See, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Cured it all, substance abuse. You don't want any? I'll take a dope. Oh, that's what I'm talking about, man. Oh, okay, you better stop okay, playing, okay, boy. Okay. Let's see here. Actually, maybe I do a little, you know what I mean? 